The Caribbean, one of the most beautiful regions of the world. Its thousands of small islands, palm-fringed beaches, spectacular coral reefs, lush rainforests, and rich cultural heritage have made it one of the world's favorite holiday destinations. With over 16 million stayover tourists and 12 million cruise ship visitors in 2010, the tourism industry is the key economic driver and the largest provider of jobs in the Caribbean after the public sector. In some countries, tourism accounts for over 80% of economic activity. The Caribbean has become the most tourism-dependent region in the world. This dependency on tourism has made the Caribbean very vulnerable to global economic downturns and competition from other destinations. But the tourism industry and the region as a whole now face a much greater threat. Climate change. The impacts of climate change are already being felt across the world, and particularly so across the Caribbean. Extreme weather events such as storms and very heavy rains, have become more intense and more damaging in recent years. Droughts have also been unusually severe, causing widespread water shortages, crop failures and extensive bushfires. Warmer seas are causing more frequent mass coral bleaching events, leaving large areas of the reef dead or degraded. Sea level rise is accelerating, causing coastal erosion, beach loss and damage to infrastructure in many ways. Future projections from climate models point towards more problems ahead. Experts agree that climate change is very likely to get worse and could have devastating impacts on the economies and environments of Caribbean countries and the livelihoods of their communities. The seriousness of these threats cannot be overstated and demands urgent international action to reduce global emissions of greenhouse gases, the main cause of climate change. But while the politicians negotiate and argue over the terms of binding agreements, there are many adaptation actions that can be carried out at a local level to prepare for the projected impacts and reduce the damage that global warming is already causing. Across the Caribbean, individuals, businesses and governments are coming together and taking practical steps to make their communities and environments more resilient and more sustainable. There are many success stories of partnerships based on shared interests and common sense and of people thinking outside the box and winning battles in the war against climate change. Above all, they are stories that need to be shared. One such story is in Barbados, where sea level rise, intense storms and degraded coral reefs are causing active coastal erosion on the western south coasts. For an island made famous by its white sand, this could be devastating. The Barbados Coastal Zone Management Unit knew that building a straight concrete seawall would cause greater problems than it solved. By combining intelligent engineering design, environmental monitoring and widespread public consultations, the approach they took has proved a huge success for tourists and residents. The first thing you need to do is to have a very good understanding of the problem and, the, and then the processes. Because uh, what I'll say is that when you embark on a, a, a project as large as this one, there is the potential to adversely affect the shoreline the movement of sand or sediment, as we call it, sediment transport. What you don't want to do is solve a problem here and create a problem somewhere else. The Barbados boardwalk not only solved the problem of beach erosion along a mile of coastline, it created an attraction, a place to exercise and a bonus for local businesses. In 2010, 22 marine turtles also gave their seal of approval and chose to come back and dig their nests on these newly restored beaches. In other parts of the Caribbean, such as on the low-lying islands of Belize, people are turning to nature to help protect the coast. Mangrove forests once protected the entire coastline of these sand caves and were removed by developers who wanted beachfront properties and views of the sea. 
The increasing frequency and intensity of storms are not just threatening what is left of the beaches, but their homes as well. Property owners have been forced to look for solutions. Some approaches are clearly less successful than others. Many are turning back to nature and replanting the trees that once stood there. Of course, this one is it's already started the, the root. But... Restoring mangroves has now become a main focus of a group of volunteers in Kekoka. They are using an award-winning technique to protect seedlings from storms and wave action. You just hold the mangrove right here where it starts growing, and it's easy. You just stick it to the, to the sand or the mud bottom rather right here. You go over with the pipe. That's it. Restoring mangrove forests not only protects the shore, but their roots also provide breeding grounds for countless species of fish and shellfish. These mangroves are critical for sustaining fisheries and also provide a natural spectacle of color and life that is often overlooked. A few miles north of Cay Corker is another success story of people and nature working in harmony, the Hol Chan Marine Park. Inside the park's no fishing zones, large and abundant fish have become a world famous attraction for divers and snorkelers. Holchan is now a valuable economic asset to the thriving dive shops, hotels and restaurants in the town of San Pedro. The fishermen as well, they support the park because it's helping replenish the surrounding areas with conch and fish. People from the nearby communities such as San Pedro, Key Cocker, Belize City make a living by taking customers there. That is definitely a measurement of success. The traditional fishermen were allowed to continue their practices with the exception of the coral reef. All the other zones, yes, they can fish. They have increased their catch. Marine biologists have recently discovered that marine parks are not only good for tourism and good for fishing, but they are also good for the health of corals. By making corals more resilient and better able to survive bleaching events, Marine parks could offer coral reefs a helping hand in their struggle to adapt to a warming world. In St. Lucia, directly underneath the famous Pitons, lies another successful marine park, the Soufrière Marine Management Association. Like Holchan, Soufrière has been successful because local fishermen and tourism operators were actively involved in the planning and remain engaged with the management of the park. Critically, both Holchan and Soufrier are entirely funded by entrance fees paid by tourists who come to dive in this World Heritage Site. With over three million visitors per year, tourism in Jamaica is big business. And one of the region's most successful tourism companies is Sandals Resorts International. The Sandals Foundation is now partnering with local fishing communities to help manage fish sanctuaries on both the north and south coasts of Jamaica. We want to play our part as a private sector getting involved because we sit in a unique position in that we have boats, we have facilities that we can try and make an impact not only to our own fish sanctuaries but to others. So with bringing the local fishermen on board and with working alongside the government, we feel that together, because local fishermen as well as the private sector are involved, we can make a bigger difference. And it's not just going to be a matter of having paper parks in Jamaica, which we don't want. We need it. It's a significant thing that's making a huge difference to, to fishermen here. The chief executive of Sandals, who recently established the foundation, is increasingly concerned about the threat of climate change and has chosen a business approach to develop and support sustainable livelihoods in vulnerable communities. What our foundation tries to do is to get into those communities and to give them some kind of economic stimulus um, that, will, that will make them insulated and, 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 and have a, a, a protective shield around them that can take them into the future. And if you can get the education 
and how it pertains to them, whether it's the sanctuaries, the marine sanctuaries, or the, you know, the, 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 the farmlands, um, and give them an opportunity to run their own microeconomies in their community, then, and, and that happens a number of ways. By partnering with regional organizations, scientists, governments, and communities, and by actively supporting the livelihoods of fishermen and farmers by providing health care and education to children, a model is being developed to show how tourism can help to strengthen the resilience of Caribbean communities. Tourists coming to the Caribbean want to make a difference. And we basically feel that we're here to give them that opportunity. They want to invest in social programs, they want to invest in the environment, they want to know more about ways they can do that. And because we have decided that we're taking our philanthropic work a step further, we're giving them that opportunity. In Antigua and Barbuda, the Curtin Bluff Resort has a mutually beneficial partnership with the nearby community, the Old Road Village, a relationship it has nurtured and maintained for nearly 30 years. We've fully educated about 40 kids in university, and every summer we send six, six boys and girls to camp. We have a little tennis facility here, a very good tennis facility, but we bring in the kids from the village. We teach them tennis from a young age, boys and girls, and those with desire and aptitude and do well in school, that's part of the deal. Uh, we send them to camp up in Maine where they get some exposure, and then it's just, you know, it's just something that is a nice thing to do. And our guests also give in to this fun too. The relationship between Curtin Bluff and Old Road, while conceived long before climate change was a concern, is the kind of partnership that is increasingly required in an age of mounting economic and climatic uncertainty. It is a model of a more caring and enlightened form of tourism that serves everyone and helps keep the Caribbean as a quality destination. Maintaining the Caribbean as a premium destination is not only desirable, it is an economic necessity. Climate policies in tourism source countries such as the United States, Canada, United Kingdom and Europe will also have an effect on the Caribbean. A new increase in the aviation passenger duty is now making traveling to the Caribbean a much more expensive proposition for UK travelers who account for a large proportion of visitors to the Eastern Caribbean. Because the cost increase is so significant it will have a devastating impact on those travelers who are coming on a budget, those that are coming through the packages and so on. Um, there's no doubt that it will force the potential uh, tourists to look at other destinations that are more affordable. As it is, we are competing in a very intense environment. To maintain its competitive advantage, the Caribbean must not only remain a quality destination with friendly communities and healthy environments, it must also reduce its operating costs. One way of achieving these goals is by using renewable resources. One of the main costs for tourism is energy. The CARICOM region imports over $30 billion of fuel per year, and yet, it is a region rich in renewable sources of energy, solar, wind, and geothermal. Some hotels, such as the Bougainvillea Beach Resort, are now using smart technologies, such as the Energy Eye, which can decrease energy consumption by 20%. Guests come into the room, they leave the system on, they go to the beach. And all that while the AC is running and power is being consumed. So the Energy Eye eliminates that. It only works when there are persons in the room. And if you choose to open your door, which will make the AC works hard, it cuts the system off totally. These technologies are not just helping hotels reduce their energy bills. They are reducing the carbon footprint of their operations and contributing to the global efforts to reduce emissions. I actually have a dream. Um, uh, this is not government policy. This is Richard Seeley's dream that maybe one day we could become an island that generates all of its electricity um, through renewables, a combination of wind and uh, solar farms and the like. I, it, it is possible. It may mean going offshore, but I think it would be not only good for the environment, but it would be good from a tourism point of view as well. 
The dream of carbon neutrality is now a strategy being explored by scientists, engineers and policy makers for several destinations in the Caribbean. The Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, together with the CaribSave Partnership, are working with governments, communities and the private sector to reduce vulnerability and increase resilience by developing practical strategies for tourism. This integrated and international approach is critical to address the challenges facing the region's most important industry. The actions required to adapt to climate change are often also opportunities to solve existing problems, to get more involved in supporting local communities and improving the environment, while meeting the demand for greener tourism. The importance of good science in this process is critical as is the need for new partnerships between governments, communities and businesses. A new era of engagement, led by necessity and market forces, has arrived.